everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new project. And this one happens to be another mixed media idea. But before I get into creating the project, I do want to make sure to remind you that even though I'm creating a mixed media project today, all of the techniques that I'm going to show you could easily be translated into a card, especially the butterflies that are the main focal point of this project they would look absolutely stunning on a card. So just keep that in mind as you're watching all of the ideas that I share today in this finished project that you could really and truly change these into a totally different project other than something that's mixed media. Now, if you do like mixed media, this is a really cool project. I love how much it turned out and I kind of like want to call it my secret butterfly garden. It just is really, really cool down to all the little small details that are showcased in this vignette, including the wire that the butterflies are suspended from that gives them a little bit of a fluttering effect. It's just a really fun and unique project. Now in today's video, I'm showcasing many new products from Simon Says Stamps December release. And in addition to that, I'm also participating in the Simon Says Stamp December release blog hop. So if you'd like to join in on the hop and see all the inspiration that's being shared today, be sure to check out not only my blog, but also the video description below if you're watching this on YouTube to find links to the blog hop where you can see more ideas and also win some prizes. So jumping right on into the project, I started first by cutting down a bunch of pattern paper from the Craft Consortium's Ink Drops pattern paper collection. And these beautiful, vibrant sheets of pattern paper are so beautiful to create nice backgrounds. I thought they would look really pretty inside of this divided tray that is from Tim Holtz. So I used collage medium to attach the pre-cut panels that I had cut off screen to fit each section of the box. So I not only have the background of the box cut into a shape for the pattern paper, but I also cut pattern paper that was going to fit each side of the box. So that way it looks like a seamless pattern. And each divided section of the box has a different sheet of pattern paper. So I've got a purplish blue on the left, I've got some green in the top right, and then a little bit more of a rainbow effect on the bottom right. I pulled out a piece of vellum here that I'm going to use to cover the sides of my box, the outside edges. Now you don't have to use a vellum like this. This was something I had in my stash for a long time. I don't even know where it came from but I'm just marking off different sections to trim into the right sizes for my vignette. And these are gonna cover all four sides of the box. Now, like I said, you could use any other pattern papers or other printed vellums if you'd like. After adhering that down with some liquid adhesive, I have some clothespins holding those down onto the sides of the box to make sure that they stay in place. And I also pulled out some mist and distress spray stains to be able to splatter on some nice texture in my backgrounds. So I used a shimmer mist. I also used some distress stains in villainous potion and also some mica stains with a pink color. I used more of that shimmer mist on some of the smaller boxes. And you'll notice that when I'm spritzing some of these shimmer mists and distress stains, on top of my different sections, I'm protecting other areas to make sure that I don't get different colors that I don't want to have in other sections cross-contaminated. In this top right one, I also added a little bit of gold shimmer mist too. So here's my background with all of its inking and pattern paper, and we're ready to start adding some embellishments. So in my stash, I had some alcohol ink backgrounds that I had made off camera when one of the days I was playing around with my alcohol inks. And so I just played with a bunch of colors and created some pretty backgrounds that I had set aside. Well, with those backgrounds, I die cut the brand new stylized butterfly die from Simon's Stamp. And when I cut those butterfly wings, I added some glossy accents in different sections so that way I could sprinkle some glitter on top of that adhesive. Now the placement of the glossy accents is completely random. I did not want to have this butterfly completely covered in glitter. I just wanted little random sections covered. 
So that's going to create a very magical, crusty butterfly wing effect, and it really sparkles in the light. So I tapped off any excess glitter and let those completely dry before I added the body of the butterfly to the wings. So I laid the wings on top of my Simon Says Stamp Positively Everything tool. Then I lined a bit of hot glue right down the center of those wings and laid the body of the butterfly right on top of that adhesive. And that glued everything down really, really well. It's nice and strong and it dried really quickly too. So I'll do that for all the butterflies that I die cut. Now the reason I'm using the Positively Everything tool to use as the surface for gluing these butterfly wings together is because it's made from silicone. So any of this hot glue that's going to get stuck on the Positively Everything tool will actually peel right off when I'm done and after it's dried. So I have all of my butterflies created and they're going to go inside of this box. But before I started hearing them down, I do want to add some additional embellishment to the box itself. I pulled out some remnant rubs from Tim Holtz. These have a beautiful butterfly theme to them and I'm going to use these to add some additional text and texture to my vignette box. I'm mostly focusing right now on the outside edges and you'll notice I also have been adding some pieces of ephemera here and there on the box and I'll show you some more of that. Those are from the Field Notes pack from Tim Holtz. When it came to the field notes, I wanted to create a distressed look for this box. So I thought it would be nice to add some torn edges. And so I ripped the edges of some of my ephemera pieces before adhering them down. So that way they look like they've been torn and worn as the years have gone on. I used collage medium to attach all these pieces onto the box. It's a nice strong adhesive. It holds really well to a variety of surfaces and it does dry fairly quickly for a liquid glue. As I adhere a lot of these liquid glue pieces onto my project, I do like to use a cloth or a paper towel to help push those pieces onto my project because that'll pick up any extra glue that might squish out the edges and it won't get my fingers all gluey. So we'll continue covering our box with different pieces of ephemera and remnant rubs. I also will start adding some ink blending too for a little bit of extra texture and color. And that'll catch on certain areas. Speaking of catching on areas, we're also going to add some paste. I wanted to use some grit paste for this to add just a little bit of a worn and textured feel to this project. You could also use crackle paste. I would have used that instead potentially for this project, but I didn't have any on hand. So grit paste was the texture that I went for for this project because I really wanted some wornness and make it look like this has been around for a very long time. Once that grit paste has dried, it does dry completely translucent. I'm going to use some ink and add that over top of that texture. So that way it'll pick up that color and it'll also add some additional blending and worn feel to this project. And so the colors I used were iced spruce and also forest moss. And that went really well with the colors that I used in the project, but it's also gonna go really well with the earthy moss that I'm going to add along the bottom bases of each of my divided trays. To apply the ink, I did use a Simon Says Stamp blending brush. I'm going to glue some of this moss inside of my tray with hot glue. I'm going to push that around the corners and you'll also notice that I have a few of the new privet branches. These are a new dye from Simon Says Stamp's December release and I cut these from a couple of different colors of cardstock. And as I glue the moss, I'm also adhering some of these branches onto my project too for some added stems and some vertical depth to my project. When it comes to attaching the butterflies to this project, I wanted to make them look like they were fluttering. So I pulled out some wire. This is 20 gauge wire and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this around my pencil. And because I'm wrapping this around the pencil, it's going to create a curly Q effect. This will just add a little bit of fun and interest to this wire. It's going to make the butterflies look like they're kind of fluttering in the air. You could attach them, of course, with just a straight wire, but I like the added curly cue effect. I think it's fun. So I've decided how long the curly cue needs to be, and, and then I'll add a little bit of hot glue to the back side of the butterfly and lay the wire inside of that glue. That way it'll sandwich that wire into the glue, and that will be a perfect adhering 
for the butterfly so that way I can attach this to my project. And again, it's gonna make the butterfly look like it's flying in the scene. For some of the butterflies, I wanted them to be a little bit higher or lower in my project. So for those, I'm going to either make a slightly smaller or slightly larger curly cue. Like for this one here, this one I want to be a little bit higher than the butterfly we just put down on that large section of the box. So this one I made a much larger curly cue for, so that way it would have that nice vertical depth. On top of the box, I also created a small butterfly that can perch right up along the top right corner. This is gonna frame up the sign panel that we're gonna be creating a little bit later on the project. To embellish that, I also glued a bit of moss around the butterfly. This is going to finish off the top and it also extends the scene outside of the box. That's one of the great things I love about vignettes is that you can really transform these into any style and design that you want. I love extending the scene past the confines of where this project sits. So throughout this project, I've been using new dies from the new December release from Simon Says Stamp. The stylized butterflies are where the butterflies came from. I'm attaching some leaves that I've cut with the new privet branch die. And I'm also gonna pull in some medallions here in a little bit. These dies are all part of that new collection. And when I say December, December is a special month at Simon Says Stamp that is all about celebrating the love of die cutting. So there is a block hop going on right now that is focused on the new December release, but there's also going to be other fun surprises across the entire month of December. While I'm talking, I was adhering some bubbles from Tim Holtz, these are clear bubbles, and on some of them, I actually covered the tops with a little bit of unicorn confetti glitter from Simon Says Stamp to give them a more sparkly fairy dust effect. Now, yesterday for the December release reveal from Simon Says Stamp, I actually shared an alcohol ink project over on my YouTube channel and blog. And in that video, I showcased how I die cut and colored some of the etched evening blossom dyes, another new dye from the December release, with Copic markers on Yupo paper. If you wanna watch that video, it's up in the top right corner and I explain the whole process in depth. Well, I'm repeating that same process of creating those flowers for this particular project too. And this time I colored a whole rainbow of them so I could hear them in the background of my butterfly scene. So I attached these down with some foam tape to give them a little bit of lift off of the background of my divided tray here. As you can see, we have the butterflies suspended from their wires, but this particular butterfly I wanted to have layered up on top of the tray, so I just glued that one straight down onto the box. So the divided tray actually has dividers separating the different sections of the box that are actually removable. I pulled out one of those to make that big large section on the left-hand side of my tray, and I took that and I'm using that to create a sign. I have some typography findings from Tim Holtz here that I'm hot gluing to spell out the word butterfly. And I put some of his large clips on either end to make it look more like a vintage sign. Here you can see some of the medallions that I'm adhering down onto the project. I have the circle rings medallion adhered to the top of this box. And I also glued that circle medallion in other areas of the project too. The sign I'm going to adhere with some hot glue right along the middle portion of my box, along the top, and you can see how that now frames up with the butterfly, which is exactly the look I was going for. In the centers of each of my flowers, I'm pulling out, I know this is not going to surprise you if you are a watcher of my YouTube videos, but yes, I'm gonna pull out some gem stickers from Honeybee Stamps to adhere to the centers of the flowers. For further embellishment, I pulled out some butterflies adornments from Tim Holtz. I didn't actually color these. I've colored them in the past and I have a video in the top right corner showing that particular project that I'm referencing where I colored these butterflies with alcohol inks. But this time I'm just gonna use them as the metal that they are, the nice pewter color. And that's gonna add just a nice subtle embellishment here and there in my scene. So now at this point, my secret butterfly garden is pretty much complete. I did add a couple of sequins here and there from a Simon Says Stamp sequin mix, and that was literally the last finishing touch. I just wanted to add a little bit more of that fairy dust effect to go along with the bubbles. 
Now in a couple areas, I did also add another medallion. This was the triangle burst medallion. And I put that onto certain sections of the project and I used some gold glitter paper for that. I wanted to tie in some more of that glitter from the butterflies, so I used gold glitter paper to make those medallions. So throughout this project, we've used some brand new dies from the December release, including the stylized butterfly, the circle rings medallion, the triangle burst medallion, the etched evening blossoms, and also the privet branch. So all of these products are available at Simon Says Stamp, and I do have them linked below in the video description or over on my blog for you to reference if you're interested in finding any of these to use in your upcoming projects. My hope is that today's video has inspired you no matter whether you create a mixed media project or if you make a card, I hope some or all of the ideas that I've shared here are going to kickstart you to create something beautiful. I know all of these techniques that I've shared today could totally be translated to cards. So if you're a card maker, I really hope that you will try some of these ideas out because these would look absolutely stunning on a finished card. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. It was a little bit longer than my usual, but I'm very grateful if you stayed to the end to enjoy and watch. If you liked it, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I will be back very soon with more inspiration to share with you all. But until I see you again, I hope everyone has a very wonderful day. Bye.